All right, high rollers, you know them, you love them on Twitter. A 17-year-old darts fanatic, an aspiring author who was first working on a Rob Cross book, but has now shifted his focus and attention to Glenn Durant. And wouldn't that be something, a book on Duzza? I'd read it. We follow each other on Twitter, and he is a faithful retweeter. At the Henry Cheel is with us today. Henry, welcome to the show, man. Thanks for being our high roller today. Thank you for allowing me to be on your channel. It means a lot to me that you're interested in the Duzza book, and let's get this interview sorted. Yeah, let's get it sorted. Hey, I know you're passionate <laughs> about a lot of sports, darts, snooker, boxing, motorsport even. Of those four, I have to admit that motorsport is my least favorite. I don't follow it. It's on your Twitter backdrop. What is it about motorsport that you love so much? Well, it's always been a part of my life. Like, ever since I was younger, my dad and, uh, took me to some see some races. It's been, my granddad's always loved it. It's in the gym, really. It's just, it's just been a part of my life, and it's in my blood, you could say. And I always go to races every year. Sometimes see the most bikes at in a track from the UK or go to Formula One. Now, I went to the Toronto Indy uh, one time in Toronto, through the streets of Toronto, a great race every year. We had seats along one of the straightaways, and I really didn't enjoy it. I got a sore neck. I was looking left, and I was looking right at whiplash speed. I didn't see anything. A lot of people do love it, though, right? It's very exciting. It's loud. I guess the next time I go, I'm going to have to sit on one of the corners where you might see some action, maybe an accident or two. Yeah, definitely. I recommend mainly going to the corners because, obviously, like you said, it's a a lot slower the cars go around. But what excites me is just the thrill of it. I really like seeing men going at full uh, pelt on the bike or a car at full speeds and just have it takes a lot of balls to do that. Well, absolutely. I mean, I watch it sometimes. You see it on TV and the crashes, and it's like, man, that takes some guts even to get in the car. It's really dangerous. Yeah, of course. And uh, obviously, there's been tragically loads of deaths from it, but as safety's so much improved these days, it's great to see that people aren't harmed from it anymore, well, hardly ever these days, which just increases the excitement for me. Obviously, it's good that there's nobody injured these days, so they can just go at it and have great times. Now, speaking of crashes, wow, Henry, what did I do? What a firestorm on Twitter over that David Shaw video where he rants on about MVG. I'm on record as saying I do not agree with David's thoughts and opinions, but I did appreciate the time and effort it took him to make that video and send it to me. Obviously, his views were very strong. MVG fans, obviously very upset. He took all kinds of heat. I took some as well. You tweeted this out in response to that video. MVG is a prime example of good to darts worldwide and is a credit to the sport we love. A fantastic world number one. From what I've heard of him, he's a gentleman and a really nice guy. And as a darts player, I could only say so much more about his talent. I think you really summed it up nicely there, the thoughts of many people. Yeah, uh, that's just what I think generally. I don't really have any G like a really nice guy and obviously he's a phenomenal dart player and we've seen that this year and all the years he's really participated and I think what David said specifically is just uh, as you said you appreciate his time to uh, say uh, say what he thinks but it's going to ask a lot of people to have a go at him for what he said and it's a bit I would say unacceptable for him to say that it's a bit I don't know if, I don't know if that's the right word for it but it's just not really it's not a good name, it's not a good image for darts, really. But, of course, I expect his opinion. Everyone has their own opinion, and that's completely fine with me. One of the things that David did say in the video is that he was a fan of Phil Taylor, and that part of his dislike for MVG is the fact that Michael Van Gerwen wins everything, and to him it gets boring. Yet I find it interesting that the exact same thing could have easily been said about the power during his heyday, during his reign, when he was always winning. I mean... When you're at the top, it's tough, right? Yeah, exactly. And Phil, I didn't watch too much of Phil, actually. I was relatively new. Wait, he was retiring a few years before, uh, after when I first started watching. But he was dominant. He was winning everything. And I'm just like, that's a bit hypocritical because not many people would have enjoyed Phil winning everything. And then now Michael's winning everything. He's not winning everything anyway, Michael, because he's just, well, he's still winning a lot, obviously. Don't get me wrong. But it is a bit... It's a bit stupid, though, to 
say that's one of the reasons why you don't like someone. Well, I got to tell you, I'm a big fan of Michael Van Gerwen. I know you've seen my videos. I've said it all the time. He's the best. He's brilliant to watch, and he's just unbelievable when he's in free flow. So I do appreciate opinions, and I apologize if I offended anyone by posting that video. Okay, your main focus, I know you have your eyes on the prize, the Dizza book. Now, you were originally going to put pen to paper about Rob Cross and his remarkable story. That really is an incredible story, right? From nowhere to world champion. I mean, wow. Uh, what what he did was amazing. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, Rob's story, I don't think we'll ever see. It's like, I'm a big fan of most sports, including most sports, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's just, I don't think you'll ever see the likes of that ever again. Because like, I never even heard of him. I remember watching him in the UK Open for his first TV appearance. And having no idea who he was. I didn't even know too much about Riley's qualifiers either. And then throughout 2017, I saw, oh, I've seen more of him. And now he just won the world. And it's just, life is meant to be all about dreaming these sorts of things. And what he's done to win 400,000 at the world, the best tournament, or arguably one of the best tournaments, is just a phenomenal achievement. And it's just a shame how uh, he's just a bit, uh, how people call him a one-hit wonder these days, because... He doesn't deserve all that because he's been playing quality this year as well. So it's just the mom his story is definitely book worthy. And I'm pretty sure there's other people out there who would want to do the same as me or did the same as me. Well, absolutely. It is an incredible story. And he is not a one hit wonder. I, he's going to prove them wrong, I feel. Yeah, of course. It's just him getting back to that time where he wasn't, he's not, uh, well, the pressure's off him now, isn't it? Because Van Gogh won the world this year and now he can just try and enjoy life and find the perfect balance between his family and darts, which is his two most important things. Now, what is the story about him not even maybe going to the qualifier, that it was a rel an uncle, I believe, that got him there? I mean, you talk about almost not making it, and then he goes, and then the story just unfolds like a perfect flower. What an incredible achievement. And you're right, the guy's still tossing in ton-plus averages for fun on the daily. Yeah, exactly, and... Uh... It just shows you, though, that one little thing can change into something massive. And his life just changed forever from that moment. Like, I remember when I was actually in, planning the book, uh, in the, he took part in the 2015 BDO World Championship qualifiers, I believe. And uh, he got disqualified for drinking water. And then he fell out, fell out of love with, with the game itself. And just to see him in 2016 give it another go and go to the Bryce qualifier... That just changed everything for him, and I must say he deserves it, to be honest, because you won't ever see anything like that ever again. No, no. what's that? He got disqualified? Yeah, I didn't know that myself until I was planning it. It was unbelievable, really. Huh, I never knew that story. That's amazing. Uh, how did it go from yeah. uh, Rob Cross to Glenn Durand, which, by the way, is another fabulous story? Uh, well, uh, things came up with Rob Cross' book, actually, but... Uh, I won't say it here because I respect their privacy, but I think as well as that, there's just many other people out there who just want to write that book. And I'm that. It was a shame to stop doing it, but I think it's just for the best, to be honest, because now I'm focusing on the Glenn Durant book. I can put all my attention into that. Well, one more thing on Rob Cross, a guy I really enjoy watching because he seems ultra competitive and yet he always seems to be in good spirits if he loses, always giving a nice handshake, saying congratulations. But when he is zeroed in, like he was at that world championship, you just get the feeling that he's not going to miss anything. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he's just, he just seems like a classy, nice guy, to be honest, because he's, he, like as you just saying, uh, handshakes after the game, just, just giving the person credit for beating him. And I, I really admire that in him because it's just, just shows who he is generally, and I like genuine characters. Yeah, he's like that in the Premier League, wasn't he? And did brilliantly all through that campaign. And I think we're starting slowly to see the Rob Cross back like we did in 2017 before yeah. winning the Worlds. Yeah, and let's hope he gets back on top. One of the things I do appreciate about him too is uh, the confidence. You know, when he hits a game-winning double, that little sly smile he gives, it's nothing over the top, but you know... He says, get in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love that about him too. It's just, he's just a really nice guy, and I just wish him all the best, to be honest. Okay, so Glenn Durant, now a, a lakeside legend who has made the switch to the PDC. He surged up the rankings. Your pin tweet reads, 
Delighted to announce that the upcoming Glenn Dern book will be available to purchase in the A180 dart shop. I am very humbled and thankful to have the book being sold at one of the best dart shops worldwide. Arrangements will be discussed nearer the time of release. Tell us about this project, man. I know it's not easy writing a book, is it? No, it's not at all. And uh, I, I don't know if I should say this, but it's, it's, it's really difficult for to... Well, firstly, with Glenn's assistance on it, it's just the best and the dream for me because... It would be very difficult without him to make a really good quality book. And, uh, of course, uh, writing a book just generally is really tough. Biographies are one of the most difficult books to write, in my opinion, personally. But with Glenn's support, and I'm sure it can be really good towards the people who would want to read it. Now, before we talk about Glenn, let's talk about you. 17, man. You're so motivated. When did this all start for you? Well, I'm just a really hardworking person in general. And, uh... To be honest, I've always enjoyed writing stories, biographies and autobiographies, or just biographies in general. What a great subject, though. Glenn Durant, newly signed Target Darts player, three world titles, pure class at the hockey, and seems like an absolutely fantastic bloke. Title of the book, have you got one yet? No, not just yet. I've got I've considered one, but I'm not going to name anything official until I actually meet him and see what he thinks would be a good title. But what do you make of Glenn Durant as a person? He seems like real class. Yeah, I, I never really followed the BDO up until around 2016 time because I didn't know too much about it. But uh, from what I've seen of Durant, he seems like a really classy bloke, like you're saying. He's very honest, and that's what I really like about him because being honest is, will get you places in life. And I do feel like, as though uh, he's a gentleman, obviously. He's been very supportive of his friends and family, obviously. And he's willing to assist in the book as well, so it's just makes it even better for me and him yeah and it's great to have a player of that caliber's help alongside i can't w- wait to read this thing man and i really wish you luck with it any timelines what's your goal with it well firstly thank you very much i can't wait to give you a signed copy personally myself oh wow i and, like that uh, i like that thank you I, I plan to give signed copies to everyone really just a nice touch and uh thank you for your well wishes with the book and hopefully i could get glenn to sign as well that's one of the things I'm planning on discussing with Glenn, and uh, he said he wants to spend a f- like seven or eight years in the PDC, so I'm thinking maybe a story up until the second year of the PDC, so after the 2021 World Championship, and then uh, afterwards I might do an extended version of his whole PDC career, and then uh, when he fully retires from darts in general. Well, it's been a great start to the PDC career so far. You know, there's a lot of comparisons between the BDO and the PDC. Maybe he didn't get the credit he deserved as a three-time Lakeside champion, but I'll tell you what, this guy can play. How far do you think he's going to rise up the ranks? Do you think he can go all the way? Uh, I wouldn't say world number one, though. It depends, really, because there's different time frames and there's different goals he said he wants to, to achieve. He's already achieved his main dream in his first year, which was to qualify for a match play, but... Uh, I think, generally, no, he could win some majors in the next coming years. I hope he does. Like, the best he does, the better, to be honest, because, firstly, it proves the haters wrong, and just proves that BDO players do cut it in the PDC. Now, I know you're ever-present on Twitter, at the Henry Cheel. Good follow, folks. Lots of darts on his timeline. You do a question of the day, one of your most recent, without looking at the comments... Which darts player first comes to mind when you see this tweet? It's interesting. I thought MVG for obvious reasons. What were others thinking? It's an interesting question, right? Because everyone's got their own dart player they follow and they like. Yeah, everyone has their favorite dart players. But I, I kind of was expecting when I put out that tweet that was uh, most of them would be Phil Taylor because he is the most successful and one of the greatest dart players to ever live. But uh, I was really surprised actually about the responses because some people just said, Durant because of the book and they just even said random players that they don't even support. Well, I'll tell you what, darts is a great sport. I'm loving the action these days. I love a bit of drama. I love to see the big reactions, the intensity, you know, other hot topics in darts these days. How about Jose D'Souza? I call him the Portuguese powerhouse. You tweeted, who the hell is D'Souza? We all said six months ago. I mean, this guy can play, right? He's lighting it up. Yeah, it's it's great to see a new uh, player come across uh, in darts. Like like I said in tweet, I never heard of him six months ago, and I wasn't 
a massive fan of Fabinho and apparently he was in there for a bit, but I didn't really follow it back when he was there. So I hope he does well though. He's been he reached the final of the Players Championship the most recent weekend, didn't he? So I, I don't think he would win majors or anything, but he definitely seems like a really good player, and it's great to see because he just won a tour card and maybe he could do what Rob Cross did. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's anybody's game these days. The margins are so close. I was cheering D'Souza on in that final. I like the underdogs. Same tweet you mentioned, James Wade. Four titles already. Two great stories right there. But how about Wade? He's playing phenomenal. I mean, I, I don't quite understand how he does it. He seems to be behind all the time, but then just pulls it out. Yeah, Wade's a really unique player compared to others because he's just like, he always used to have really decent scoring and then um, even better doubling, which won him majors and things. And then uh, he was nowhere a few years ago. And to see him bounce back to win back-to-back majors at the end of last year, and now to see him do uh, excel and do even better, I think it just shows you that people can bounce back in style. And it seems like he's going to win something big this year. And hopefully it's the world, because he really deserves to win that after so much unluckiness these last two years. You also tweeted out about Jamie Lewis. I think everyone was shocked when they saw that average 48, a world championship semi-finalist. He's in some poor form of late. Yeah, it's a shame to see, but uh, I've got, I'm a massive fan of Jamie. I really like the bloke. He's, he seems really nice, and he's definitely a lot of talent. But it's just, his floor form this year hasn't been the greatest, but he's never really sparked a light on the floor. He's always seems better on stage, and that was showing it when he uh, averaged 107, I believe, in the World Series Finals last year. I hope he does better, though, and hopefully he gets uh, his confidence up and we should see him in a few majors this year. Now, some other players you've got your eye on these days. I know you're looking at Mark Magini. We talk about Glenn Durant coming over from the BDO. Magini's done well as well. The gladiator can play. He's got that rigid throwing style, but I do enjoy watching the man. Yeah, I enjoy uh, watching him. He was one of my favorite BDO players players actually but, uh, back in the day a few years ago when he was in BDO actually and uh, I still like he's a bit uh, in, as an outcast to be honest because he won a tour card in the second day I think almost won it in the first day and not, not really many people said a word they all focused on Durham and don't get me wrong I can understand why Durham got, uh, gets all the notice but McGean is a quality player as well and he's, he's showing it and he's hit a nine dance on the t- pro tour this year it's phenomenal mm-hmm. You know, when I think of Mark McGinney, I think of those mismatched darts for the world title, and it makes you wonder, you know, a game of millimeters, uh, how many years he'll be looking back on that. It's something, right? It's just like Rob Cross getting up that day and going to the qualifier. If he didn't, I mean, if he hits that double, everything's changed. Yeah, I, was, I remember watching that game. I wanted uh, McGinney to win that, and uh, he really, it's a shame because it's just quality, and uh, he seems like a really nice bloke as well, and it, missing that start for any game, even if even if it's a really small game, it's still going to hurt you. And I feel like that will haunt him for a bit. Maybe it, he, he's completely over it and fair play to him. But I feel like him and the PDC now would support him more financially and he's just much more happy to be in the PDC now. And, and lastly, the match play is just around the corner. Any thoughts on that? I know you had your eye on Ryan Searle. He didn't qualify does a did. It's always a great tournament with great atmosphere. And wouldn't that be something for your book, Chapter One, perhaps, if Glenn Durant could pull it off? Yeah, um, uh, Ryan Sell has been keeping my eye on. I'm a big fan of him. He's been performing really well as of late on the floor and had a great one run at the Worlds last year. He's definitely a, a great quality player. And uh, it's a shame he jumps out on the match play because he's just had a bit of unluckiness in the last few weeks. I think. We can definitely see him perform better and come back again stronger next year to qualify for that tournament. Well, I'll tell you what, it's one of the tournaments of the year I look forward to. It's always great atmosphere. Always, There's always something that happens that stands out and there's always some fine play. Yeah, just the match play in general, like, the atmosphere is brilliant on hearing. And, uh, I'll definitely go there one day and I feel like for the book wise it should be because that's a good idea of chat to one, actually. I'll, I'll make a note of that. And, uh, I think just the match play in general, the atmosphere, everything about it is just just shows why it's one of the best tournaments to go to fan wise and I think it would be a great tournament this year. Well let's hope so. He loves the darts folks. He's only seventeen, a darts fanatic, an aspiring author, and he's working hard as we speak on a Glenn Durant book. I can't wait to read it. 
at the Henry Cheel on Twitter. Henry, wish you all the best with the book, man. Thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you, mate, for having me on here, and thanks for that as well. I'll keep everyone informed, including you, about future updates, and uh, all the best, mate. Yeah, and I love you on Twitter, at the Henry Cheel. Folks, give him a follow, at the Henry Cheel. And follow High Roller Radio as well.